What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today, I'm actually looking at Frank's Big Package, which is a sentence I never want to say again. It is Dead Rising 4 coming out finally for the PS4, and it has every bit of content, every item, pack, DLC, the Frank Rising story campaign add-on, Rising Dead Golf, the new Capcom Heroes campaign changes, and of course, a number of gameplay improvements. For anyone who owns this game already on PC or Xbox, you're going to get Capcom Heroes and the gameplay fixes free on the 5th. For PS4 owners, this is for you. $49.99, let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Dead Rising 4 Frank's Big Package. Sword and Board replaced by Tat and Hat, the trials of Chuck Walrus, and how to screw up what is almost a sure thing. Graphics start first. You don't like the original game when it came out a year ago. Dead Rising 4 is a good jump in quality and presentation than Dead Rising 3, and it runs at 1080p, 30fps, with obviously all the zombies from all the games in it. And it can look excellent at times, like when you're ripping through the M&M shelled zombies in an old Firebird and listening to Christmas carols, or taking out the baddest Santa in his repertoire of elves that finally do a good job of capturing just how goddamn creepy it'd be if a fat bearded dude in red showed up in your house laughing maniacally and asked for food. It really is the color work that I found to be so improved from Dead Rising 3, and it's not just the mixture of Christmas themes and mall themes and the outdoor moments, it's how they play off one another just enough to not get bored with any one of them. Now, while we see a fairly steady frame rate as we moved from the Xbox original and S and of course the PC to the PS4 version, the new modes also offer their own pinata of particle fun. And I mean it when I say particles everywhere. I'm pretty much surprised that in the Capcom mode, there isn't a character just called Effects Man. Now, when you're playing in Capcom hero mode and you're slicing through enemies or you're losing your costume and it explodes in this confetti and Christmas wrapping moment, it really just works to solidify that Christmas theme. Also, who doesn't want to be Joe from Beautiful Joe and take out enemies with well-placed punches and your tongue hanging out like some kind of digital Michael Jordan? And to me, really, that's when the game's hitting on all cylinders when it comes to the looks. For example, the Capcom characters. I'm actually surprised at how high of a number there are. They have their own animations, movement styles, and attack styles. One second you're Mega Man, then a shadow version of Cammy, then normal Cammy, then Arthur from Ghouls and Ghosts. And as you unlock them and unlock their ending special move and then unlock their shadow versions, there's an impressive eye for detail here, including, unfortunately, Frank in a Cami costume with his middle-aged old man glutes that almost broke me. But you know what? I suffer for you guys. Sadly, there are a number of issues with Frank's big package. That's going to be hard to say through the entire review. First, the game's got a really wonky shadow system, which is either using a lower resolution mesh or dithering system of some kind or both. And this results in some odd lighting and moments that look just overall weird with a strange pattern effect appearing in those shadows. Also, the PS4 version has something I have never encountered in the Xbox version or the PC version, and that's issues sometimes with loading assets, unfortunately, like food. So if you're running around the middle of a battle somewhere and the game just forgets there's food nearby, even if you just saw it two seconds ago. And of course, that results in death as you're waiting for a banana and some chick who spent one too many weekends at the Renaissance Fair lights you on fire with a flaming sword. Luckily, that isn't actually super noticeable. It just comes up sometimes, and most of the time, you're actually hurricane-kicking zombies or slice them in half with a broadsword, and in the end, that's probably the best part. I'd say, overall, the PS4 version of Dead Rising does have some improvements, but it also comes with a small number of problems you may or may not notice. Sound, music, and voice. <laughs> You're saying this mall wasn't even open one day before it got destroyed by zombies? We gotta move. That door would lead to the maintenance hallway? Yeah, but the manager locked himself in there when he got bit. Been trying to bust it down for, like, ever. And of course, sound is up first. Now, the issues I had with the original version continue here. Most of it's right on with the guns having a nice throaty sound to them and the auto shotgun sounding like the audible terror it would be. Let's be honest, it's basically a chainsaw that shoots shotgun shells at somebody. But some explosions continue to be weak with some of the different weapons just not really having that much of an impact. Now, that being said, environmentally, the sound work is excellent. Due to the way Dead Rising plays, it is vital that sound separation and information delivered to the gamer is accurate. And here it is allowing for you many times to just attack an enemy sight unseen just by hearing them coming towards you, but out of camera view. Surprising how many games can actually still get that wrong. Lastly, processing is excellent, and once again, you get that echo and sound occlusion and bouncing acoustic. That means if you're neck deep in a bunch of zombies who want to treat you like a literal Big Mac and you're in the back of some alley somewhere, it can be almost frustrating finding where someone's yelling from or shooting from. And that way that a person's cry for help can echo down a dead-end street is actually handled really well.
Also, of course, you have the addition of Capcom Heroes mode and you have various effects from the different games and tear ass and through a bunch of zombies with a hurricane kick or just explode them in place like Joe does is fantastic and boomy. It's really well done stuff aside from one or two little issues. Music. So while the original score was almost so eclectic that I think some gamers might have had a hard time actually listening to it, I love some of the chances they took and listening to Country Twang one second and then the most depressed Christmas song the next is a good way at the very least to get your attention. And since we have these dueling locations of mall and outdoorsy locations, and in fact, a couple others, we do get some cool change ups. Also, the various new modes get their own excellent arcade cabinet themes. But I think they're going to be a little bit hit and miss for some people. We still have the larger expressive bits that you would expect when Frank is neck deep in zombies, but there is some attempts at doing something different, which I definitely enjoy. Also, I got to say, I love the menu theme, which is this vibey horror theme with old coin op sounding music rampaging up and down it. That is very well done. I'd say overall as a soundtrack, I like it in the game, but it's not exactly something you will listen to outside of that. And of course, that brings us to voice. And yes, this isn't Frank West from the original. But once you get over that, I think the actor themselves does a pretty good job. The lines aren't the best. And to be honest, those in addition to this game and the mini golf game, anything on the side that isn't the main campaign or its expansion are sort of terrible. But it's less the actor than it is some poor direction and planning and just use of voice. For example, in the mini game, Frank is teamed up with an announcer who's turned into a zombie already. But instead of the hijinks like Saints Row, where they had that zombie voiced character singing along with the radio here, almost nothing is done. And that joke just sort of dies. And it's the occasional grunt that you hear. And then Frank saying one liners and not a lot of them. And while the main game does have a couple little issues, I really did like some standout moments, like when Frank finally meets up with his protege or when he tries to escape a classroom, it's possibly the worst attempt I've ever seen at escape. And I really did enjoy the vocal work that happened there. Also, special note is Vic, who's Frank's student and one of the cruxes of the adventure, really, and her complete jack acidness is legendary. She does an amazing job reacting and then overacting to Frank, and I actually really liked their tit for tat. In the end, it's not the original voice actor, but you know what? All that being said, it's not a bad job here by the person who's had to take it over. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. You play as Frank West, tricked into returning once again to the town of Willamette in search of information on a new outbreak. Of course, as we all know, the easiest way to investigate stuff is to basically turn into a mixture of a science teacher and a homicidal Batman. So you bash, burn, cut, slash, slice, shoot, and smash thousands of zombies and some humans as you spend time investigating what happened, leveling up, finding outposts to clear, and discovering what occurred between the last games and now. You know what? Surprisingly, that's one of the highlights to me of Dead Rising 4. Due to the more spread out nature, or at least the more flexible location use, there were moments of respite in the story that did not exist in the past games in the same way. And I, of course, get that that's a development decision some people don't love. I just liked its pacing more than Dead Rising 3 for sure, and maybe even more or equal to 2. In addition to the campaign, of course, you have the Frank Rising conclusion, as I talked about earlier. You have DLC, the mini golf multiplayer, and Capcom Heroes mode. And of course, in the campaign proper, combo weapons and various disposables are the order of the day. And with the additional DLC, there's an incredible amount of variety here with each basic and combo weapon or vehicle, of course, having its own life bar that basically diminishes as you use it until it explodes. If you really think about it for a second, if we could find out that mixing a dog collar, a TIE fighter model, and some gasoline dangerously siphoned from a vehicle, and they could be combined into a goddamn Voltron and fly drone style around and shock enemies, no one would leave the friggin' house. FYI, that's not a real combo, but I honestly think it should be. I adore some of these combinations as well, like the wizard staff that shoots out yard gnomes. And when you have a special move with it, they're summoned like a yard gnome army or crazier stuff like two wheeled Christmas inspired doom sleds. It is all really enjoyable stuff. Now, as you play the game, you will get experience to level up Frank across four major trees, brawling, fortitude, shooting and survival with different skills locked off due to levels and the points needed to get him. Of course, one thing I've always liked about these kind of systems is it really allowed me to play Frank like I wanted, and that changed what I cared about in the world. For example, raising my fortitude skills to get life regeneration as well as more points and stamina and health meant I could wade into zombies far more ably than if I'd spin them in, let's say, even shooting. Smartly, though, Dead Rising does make sure that there's a level requirement, so it means you will spread those points out a little bit. Of course, what is Dead Rising without goofy outfits? And Big Package has a ton, and the ability to mix and match means a gas mask wearing, board short clad, sobrero sporting Frank is possible to play out in the cutscenes. And of course, that doesn't exclude the exosuit, which allows you to basically rampage through the town like a chubbier Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow. I think when it comes to all the action in Dead Rising 4, I love that the most, the total rampaginess of those moments, because in the end, 
whether they give you a gun or a big metal axe is sort of like training a guerrilla martial arts. It's not really going to matter very much. You're in a giant steel suit. Of course, the main gameplay here does see you killing zombies, but I also like the fact that you have these smaller missions like randomly saving people who need to be rescued so they can evacuate to shelters, clearing out the shelters themselves, finding the story elements all over the world, finding hidden shelters with their own little mini stories, and of course fighting the maniacs, which are this game's versions of psychopaths. They've been improved a bit from the original game release as well with a bit better AI, which is nice since they were incredibly easy to defeat when the game actually originally came out. Also, bravo to Capcom for adding something truly new to the normal campaign in the form of distress calls. These are a few new missions in the game, and while not entire acts or anything of that sort, they pop up and give you just a little bit more reason to explore. There's not a lot of them, a little bit over a half dozen. These can add more time, of course, to that 15 plus hours to get you through just the main story. Of course, speaking of main story, let's talk a little bit about Capcom Heroes Mode. This is the same game, but not only do you play as Frank, you can also collect Capcom coins and unlock a huge number of Capcom characters that are able to be played for a specific amount of time before you turn back into Frank. And this, to me, is where a ton of the meat of the game could be. Dead Rising 4 is a campaign, probably, like I said, 15 hours, with Frank Rising only adding a couple more. Capcom Heroes blows that up, since not only is it the main campaign, but it has its own set of rewards, and a ton of them at that, rewarding you for ending cutscenes as heroes and not as Frank, finding stars, performing specific moves, and so forth, including the rampaging maniac clown from the first game. It's awesome, and the time limit really isn't that bad when it comes to how long you can be him. What shocks me, though, is that when you're Frank, all weapons and weapon combos are off. That's right. No picking them up, no combo weapons. Even some of the cutscenes and game moments have actually been changed if they involved, for example, you putting together a combo weapon or a combo vehicle. And this results in Frank swinging a random weapon for each hit and then dropping it. So a two by four, then drops it, only to swing a saw blade, then drops it, then a bat, then drops it, and so forth. I'm actually stunned how poorly it's handled since much of the game, you're actually going to be Frank running around trying to get to the arcade cabinets to unlock the characters or to find more stars. And it just honestly looks bad. I mean, the game is goofy already, but magician Frank pulling a steel bar four feet long from some questionable orifice is borderline creepy. Why is it that Frank can't at least get basic weapons? To me, this is a stunning miss in the design and it's hampered enjoyment of Capcom heroes for me from start to finish because frankly, frankly, I really did enjoy the normal gameplay of the Dead Rising games, and I didn't want them to just be removed because of the Capcom Heroes Edition. And of course, as I said before, you also get a mini golf mode. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to mini golf, it's bad. The typical mistake of thinking, oh, because it's mini golf, it'd be easy to do. It's not. Add in insane loading times for the courses, and while there are six with four parts each, at about course number one, part three, you're going to have a high chance of just turning it off. But for completionists, there is a large amount of unlocks there as well, which you use different currency for than the in-game stuff. So you could end up playing a ton of it. But hitting an oversized golf ball around various locations, getting points for doing well or exploding zombies just wasn't for me. And of course, you have the multiplayer mode, which replaces the co-op, which is a little bit like saying, hey, you know that amazing sandwich you're enjoying? Let's fill it with gravel. In multiplayer, though, after setting up public or private games and a few options, you can jump in. You start out in your main base in the morning and then perform various missions with four other people, unlocking the three locations as you do so. So what holds Frank's big package from being a delight? Well, uh, the bugs, basically. The first, of course, is the aforementioned streaming issues with different items not showing up right away, and that's pretty insidious when it's the actual health items. But also had three crashes back to the OS screen, which is fairly rare. Also, in Capcom Heroes mode, a special move that'll have you blasting through enemies can sometimes leave you stuck in the geometry. Also, there's a bit of a control issue here. The original game on the Xbox didn't have much of an input delay, the PC version some people complained about, but for me, both the PS4 and Pro versions did feel a tiny bit off and noticeable compared to the others. Fun factor. First, I want to say when the apocalypse happens and the dead and somewhat dead begin to rise, the first thing I'm going to do is roll around in a bunch of friggin' Elmer's glue and then leap into a metal recycling bin like some of these freaks have done. And it's that extraordinary what the hellness that can pop up in Dead Rising that's really enjoyable to me. From scarecrow maniacs to riding around in a battle golf cart that looks like it belongs in some kind of fan made Mad Max movie. It's great stuff. And that duality of the mall locations with the outside locations and some of the hidden spots really worked for that feeling of exploration that I always liked. But unfortunately, the issues do bring this down. 
despite the huge amount of gameplay, it just feels like every new addition, there's a problem. It's on the PS4 with a fairly smooth frame rate, but it's got random streaming bugs. It adds a whole additional way to play the campaign and a ton of rewards for doing so with some amazing fan service, but then completely truncates the fun out of it, making Frank a street side magician with crowbars and bats replacing the doves in his pocket. It's got mini golf, but the less said about mini golf, the better. And while its multiplayer works, it's only four missions and it replaces a more robust co-op. As you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is a wait for a sale. It's only $49.99, so it is cheaper. And of course, like I said, some of these elements people are going to get for free if they've got the Xbox and PC version. There's a lot added here, but a lot of problems that come with it and some questionable choices on gameplay that I want to make sure people know so that when they jump into, let's say, Capcom Heroes mode and they swing that first time and they see Frank drop the baseball bat, they don't do what I did and go... When the hell just happened? So that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon or the Amazon affiliate links in the description. Patreon is definitely where you guys can continue to help the channel go and continue to allow me to give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And remember, I buy every single game I review, even if a developer gives me a code. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.